This is Martiak Market Update. I'm Mark Martiak. I'm a senior wealth strategist with Premier Wealth Advisors in the heart of New York City. And I'm a registered representative with First Allied Securities Incorporated, member of FINRA and SIPC. Thank you for joining me. This show will explore topics ranging from market updates to the global economy and personal finance. Money is knowledge, and I understand life happens fast. And this program, my views, I hope, will help you navigate your relationship with money with timely guidance and my unique perspective. Our economy needs immigrants. In a recent Barron's article, Scott Minard, the chief investment officer at Guggenheim Partners, made his case for why the U.S. economy needs immigrants. A dominant constraint in the U.S. economy is the size of the labor pool. To sustain continued growth, increasing corporate profits, and better living standards while maintaining relative price stability, policymakers in Washington must approach their idea of labor differently. Labor shortages are already appearing in key sectors of the economy, with about half of small businesses reporting few or no qualified applicants for job openings. For the first time since the government began tracking job openings in 2000, available jobs exceed available workers. For instance, home builders report a shortage of workers in certain trades like drywall and framing, which is crimping the supply of new housing and helping to drive up home prices, reducing affordability. The growth rate of the American labor force is decelerating sharply. Population growth has slowed and the population is aging. 60 years ago, 39% of the population was below the age of 20, while 23% was age 50 or older. Today, 25% is under age 20, and 35% is over 50. By 2040, just 23% of the population will be younger than 20, and 39% will be over 50. In contrast, the domestic labor force is projected to increase by an anemic five-tenths of 1%, annually over the next few decades, compared with growth rates of more than 2.5% in the 1970s. How can the U.S. invest in building a strong labor force? How do we train the undereducated? How do we motivate and incentivize aging baby boomers? Each question deserves the most consideration from our policymakers. Make that the utmost consideration. But Another component is immigration. That's right, immigration. Immigration and immigrants in particular with their kids have contributed more than half of the growth of the working age population over the past two decades. Immigrants add to America's economic dynamism through their entrepreneurialism and technological innovation. A dynamic policy that increases the pool of working immigrants could raise annual U.S. growth by 1% or more for decades to come. Listen, we need all types of skilled workers, including those studying at U.S.-based universities. Foreign students who attend American universities can have employers ready to sponsor them along with multi-year employment-based visas following extensive background checks. In New York and other cities, highly skilled workers already qualify for H-1B visas, but there aren't enough of them because of the strong demand. Last April, the demand for these H-1B visas was so strong that the congressionally mandated application cap of 65000 for the year was reached in just five days. Let me be clear here. The construction trades deserve immigrants as much as any other sector of the labor force. I come from a family of immigrants, and in particular, IBEW union electricians. And I bet there are talent shortages of up-and-comers there as well. Let me also be clear that coming into this country illegally is a crime, no matter how you look at it and regardless of party affiliation. As Scott Minard suggests, workers who come into this country illegally in exchange for receiving permanent legal status should have to pay taxes and contribute to Social Security and Medicare, just like working citizens. However, Scott suggests that they could be restricted from receiving many social benefits provided to tax-paying U.S. citizens and shouldn't be eligible for a much longer period, perhaps until age 75. 
If our policymakers can take an economically focused approach to immigration policy, combined with productivity gains from recent tax reform and efficiency gains from improved infrastructure, then our economy can enjoy sustained growth, labor growth, wage growth, and higher GDP growth. With this in mind, why can't we avoid the needless boom-bust cycles of expansion and recession? Policymakers and the corporate CEOs need to get creative and smart without the partisan politics to grow the U.S. labor force. Smart and sensible immigration planning and policy implementation is long overdue. Let's not forget it. It could affect generations to come. That's a wrap for Mardiac Market Update. I'm Mark Mardiac, and thank you for joining me today. Remember, you can find all the episodes on my blog at markmardiac.com. Always feel free to contact me if you have any questions about anything we've talked about or if you'd like to discuss your financial portfolio. Tune in next time for Mardiac Market Update. I'll see you around.